This is... This is where you're used to seeing me. But uh, this office has become very congested. And uh, lately I've been kind of preferring doing my work. Well, here, let me show you. Lately I've been preferring doing it outside. But now it's really cold. So what do I do? Well, I want to be able to do my software development up here where it's really light. But I need to set up a new desk space. I'm going to do the setup right here in this space. This particular model is the FlexiSpot 60 by 30 inch with the bamboo top. Thanks to FlexiSpot for sending me this desk to check out. The desktop and the hardware arrived on two different days, which had me worried for a bit, but they both got to me relatively fast. So in this video, I'll review the desk and also give you a tour of some of the items that I bought myself based on my needs as a software developer. So after a little less than an hour and the desk was done, one thing I gotta worry about myself is cable management. These little ties come with the desk, but I have a feeling I'm gonna need to do a bit more. The desk has motors on each side and the range is quite extensive. Yeah, that gets pretty high. <laughs> for reference, I'm six feet tall and this is way too high for me. I also weigh 186 pounds or 84 kilograms. And in the name of science, I wanted to see if this thing would lift me. It was able to lift me, although pretty slowly. But what I noticed is that the motors are super quiet, much quieter than my previous desk. And that was an unexpected bonus. This desk is a sit-stand desk and it's fully automatic. I can push a button, it goes up to a pre-programmed level. Now I can stand up and uh, do my work like this. Now I think it's very healthy to be able to stand up throughout the day. As a developer, we sometimes get so focused and tied into sitting in front of our computers that we forget to stand. And this comes with a nice little feature. It's got this A button, it reminds you when you need to get up. Now I've been using a sit-stand desk since 2011. That's when I bought my first one and it's got a couple of things that I don't like. For example, it does not have memory locations. So you kind of have to stand there and wait until the desk goes up and hold it. That's something that this desk addresses. The FlexiSpot desk also shows you what height you're at and it's got three memory locations where you can save your presets. All right, now what's the second most important thing besides the desk? If you're not using a standing desk, you're gonna be sitting. You need a nice comfortable chair and the Erman Miller Aeron chair is one of my oldest things that I have. Call me old fashioned, what can I say? But this chair has lasted me many years and I have two of them. My only gripe with this chair is that uh, I do audio recording and sometimes it gets a little bit too squeaky and those show up on the recordings, which could get annoying. Now, I'm not an expert in cable management, but I did the best I could, and I have some tips that might be able to help you out in your own setups. There's only one power cord that goes to the desk. All the other power cables are hidden under the desk. This is a very important consideration for sit-stand desks in general, since when you raise the desk, you wanna make sure that you're not dragging up a whole rat's nest of cables. The less cables that have to go up and down with the desk, the better. Now here, the rest of the cables are all tucked away under the desk, and they essentially become part of the desk. All right, I'm about to show you the scary part. I promise this will be quick and painless. Well, maybe a little bit painful for me. There's a combination of screws, Velcro tape, and Velcro ties that hold everything together under the desk. Now, since we're down here, I gotta say, I'm a strong believer in some kind of surge protection as I've been bitten before. In my main office, I have a UPS or uninterruptible power supply, as well as power conditioners. But here, there'll be overkill. As long as there's some kind of surge protection built into your power strip, that should be fine. Now, this particular one is from Anchor, and I really like this one because it has lots of outlets and it's got USB power as well. I've simply attached this using Velcro. Any kind of wall warts or power bricks are also hidden here using the same technique. I really enjoy having a desk length power strip. This one is actually screwed into the desk. It doesn't come with a desk, but I bought it. It allows me easy access for power anywhere along the desk, which is really convenient. I'll link to it down below, as well as everything else here. Now, some of the items I'm gonna show you, I've been using personally for up to six years. So I have absolutely no hesitation recommending these things. And there's other things that are brand new to me. I'm gonna give you my honest first impression of these things, but how they will last in the long term, 
uh, that's still questionable. I might need to do a follow-up next year. Now downstairs, I have two monitors set up. Typically, I enjoy that, but lately I've been using two monitors for two different machines, so it doesn't really make sense. Here, I decided to go for just one monitor, which actually gives me a lot more desk space to work with. Having one extra monitor is plenty. In case you are interested, I did actually purchase a dual monitor arm to test it out. It's actually really good. I like that one, but uh, all I need here is one monitor. Because I have the MacBook Pro display, so now I have two displays and that's all I really need. I got my code window up here for the maximum amount of space. And over here, I've got the rest of it. Email, Slack, GitHub, and of course, Stack Overflow. Plenty of those tabs open. One important thing I wanna add about these monitors, they do come with their own stands, but the stands are, even though they're pretty, they take up a lot of desk space. It's this rounded thing from LG. I like to take those off, and since these are VESA capable, VESA, VESA, how do you say that? I don't know. Uh, you can just attach them to pretty much anything using that system, and I have a monitor stand right there that attaches to the desk. So now the monitor moves along up and down with the desk, and it also gives me a lot of flexibility to move the monitor around. When I'm coding, I like to listen to music. It's gotta be a special kind of music, no lyrics, and it usually has some kind of uh, incessant beat. So I have this thing called Apogee Duet. It's an audio interface, and that basically is what controls my audio. Apogee makes really high quality audio interfaces, and uh, this is one of my favorites for travel, as well as desk setups like this. I have it hooked up to the speakers on each side here. The Apogee has really nice quality A to D and D to A converters. That's analog to digital, digital to analog. So when I'm bringing the signal in via a microphone or bringing the signal out via headphones, for example, I wanna get the best possible audio signal. I do have some nice headphone suggestions for audio production and monitoring. I'll link to them down below if you're interested. But for casual listening, I prefer AirPods or these quiet comfort Bose over the ear headphones, which I carry with me when I'm traveling as well. Now let's move on to lighting. As you can see during the day, I don't have a problem. I really like all the light that comes in here. Well, mostly. I like to have a little light on my desk and the outside lights just uh, don't bring enough light in. So I've gotten pretty used to using a light bar in my setup, and I think that they're pretty important. In fact, I made a separate video comparing different light bars. I'll link to that down below. I'll also leave a link to this one, which is a cheaper one, as well as some better options. I remember when I mentioned in the beginning that I have some really old things in here. This light right here has served me well for over six years. And basically it's just a really simple light. They have a new model now, which I'll also link down below, that has a charging station for your phones. But this thing has been on, like it's LED, so it doesn't take that much power, so I don't feel so bad about it. But it's been on 90% of the last six years. It still works great. You can change the different color settings. Just a really nice desk lamp. This is a floating light bulb. It floats. It does give off light, but not enough to let you see things. It just looks cool. Now let's get to those really neat things that are small, but still important. And I wanna start off with the Thunderbolt 4 dock. I've used the same Velcro technique to put this cute little Thunderbolt 4 dock on the back of the monitor. I've got the light bar connected to it, the camera, the monitor, and the audio interface all connected to this dock. This is a webcam. It's got AI built into it. I can move around and it actually follows my movement and tracks me. It can zoom in and out by itself. More details on the camera in another video. When it comes to keyboards, I tried being fancy once and I got myself a mechanical keyboard, but I always keep coming back to the ones made by Apple. This is the Magic Keyboard and it works exceptionally well and it feels very close to the MacBook keyboard. So when I'm switching between this and that, it's not a huge jarring change. And it's not something I have to relearn every time I switch locations. The Magic Trackpad, same story. <laughs> it's just a bigger version of what's available on the Mac Pro. Eh, just slightly bigger. I also do sometimes use a mouse 
and when I'm on the go, I actually prefer a mouse. Now, if you have nice headphones, you wanna treat them nicely so that they last. That's why I got this headphone stand. It matches nicely to the desk because it has a bamboo base, but it's also special because it's so tall and it accommodates my headset that has the cans as well as the built-in microphone. And the bowl is also a nice feature to put stuff into. Another accessory that I've recently acquired, so I can't speak to uh, how well it's going to work, but it's working well so far. It's this Mophie battery slash stand for my phone and it's mobile. The power station stand contains an 8,000 milliamp hour battery and can charge through USB-C at 18 watts. So it seems promising on paper at least. It's a battery so I can take it with me when I leave and when I come back, I can just set my phone right on it and begin charging. Now, you also might've noticed that my laptop is not on the desk, but I have it on this little turntable stand, which you can turn in any different direction. And it raises up the MacBook so that it's pretty much at the same level as my monitor. One thing I noticed about using a smaller monitor next to a larger monitor, unless they're on the same level, there's an extra cognitive overhead that I have to think about when I'm moving a window from one place to another or my mouse from one place to another and the displays are not on the same level. So this kind of helps that by raising the MacBook up to about the same level and I can also change the height of the monitor itself to align it a little bit better with the MacBook screen. Now, speaking of stands, I also have my iPad here and the iPad stands on this little device. It's a really solid stand and basically you can position it any way you want and it's gonna stay that way. If I wanted a third monitor option using Sidecar, for example, I could set that next to my MacBook and then I will have three monitors. Maybe I wanna watch a movie while I'm coding. Not a good idea. Now I also have a stack of these drives that I've had over the years for different purposes. My theory is this, I'm gonna save money and not get the maximum hard drive space or SSD space on the MacBook because Apple charges quite a premium for that. And instead I'm gonna offload things that I don't need immediately to external storage like this. I've had these Lassie rugged one terabyte to four terabyte drives for a number of years and I find them to be pretty reliable so far. This is not to stop you from a real backup solution. This is not a real backup solution. If you stuck around through this whole video, then I'll be happy to inform you that I have another video coming out on that camera, that AI camera, and it's gonna include a giveaway. Yeah. Anyway, happy shopping. It's Black Friday. If you like any of the things in this video, please use the links down below. It helps out the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back.